Under the infamous nine-year rule of the carpetbaggers that followed the Civil War, thieves, murderers, and other fugitive criminals from every part of the country found sanctuary in the state of Texas. In 1874, the Union Army of Occupation was withdrawn, leaving Texas at the mercy of a horde of ruthless bandits operating in open defiance of all existing law enforcement. Among them were some of the most dangerous men in American criminal history. Such men as that legendary outlaw, the terror of every Texas railroad. Fares, please. I'm the new conductor on the train. Sam Bass is the name. Shell out, folks, shell out all you got. Traveling comes high in Texas when Sam Bass is running the train. Right in the bag, man. Thank you, sis. Lovely day, isn't it? Duke Fisher, a two-gun stop sign on any highway. John Wesley Harden, gentleman by birth, lawyer by training, killer by instinct. Travis County has law and order now, Harden. What's the charge, Marshal? Murder, mayhem, and highway robbery. Unbuckle his belt, Joe. <laughs> David Rudabaugh, king of the cattle rustlers. I'll only call you Dave, but I have the high hand. Three aces. You got the low hand now, partner. And the Sundance Kid, a double-dealing gent who only had one real friend, the Sundance Kid. Buff Smith, a good boy in bad company. Hold him, Johnny, like it mounted. John Carver, the fastest gun in Texas. Come on, Johnny. They killed George Fenton. Is that true, Miss Helen? Yes. These men started shooting and my father fell right beside me. Sorry, ma'am. He stopped the last one the Sundance kid threw at me. You're just as much to blame. You were in this together. Thieves and murderers. I'll see you hang for it. Let's bring them up right now. Wait a minute. Let's do this according to law and order. All right, boys, take them away. To combat this lawlessness, the state once again called into being the Texas Rangers demobilized since the beginning of the Civil War. Major John B. Jones, a gallant officer of the Confederacy, was placed in command. And no finer body of fighting men was ever known. Within two years, Major Jones and his Rangers had brought law and order to the far-flung borders of Texas. It was then that Sam Bass called together the remaining bandit leaders at one of his hideouts in the Lampasas River region. All right, gentlemen. Now that we're all here, let's get down to cases. I reckon you know I didn't ask you to wait down here just to have a sociable drink and smoke. Now well, let's get to it, Sam. I ain't even to spend the night in this swamp. Hold your horses, Arkansas. I'm the dealer. Boys, the way Major Jones and his rangers are going, we're going to be holed up in a worse place than this. If we don't do something about it, pronto. Well, there's no argument there, Sam. What's your plan? Organize, Wes. Put everything we have into one pot. Work some big jobs together. Share and share alike. Yeah, I've always worked alone. So have I, Arkansas. We all like to play a lone hand. But where's it getting us? How's cattle rustling, Dave? I moved a steer in two months. 
You ain't been doing so good either lately, have you, Sundance? Now you, Duke. Now you either, Butch. And, uh, John, they tell me the Rangers blew up that last bank job of yours. Right in my face. I was lucky to get away. There you are, boys. I tell you, there's only one way to beat this, Major Jones. Working together, we can lick any Ranger outfit they send against us. They've been busted up before, and we can do it again. Why, before we're through, we'll just about own this part of Texas. Stock, lock, and barrel. It's mighty big talk, Sam Bass. Seems to me the kind of outfit you're proposing has got to have a boss, ain't it? That's right. I reckon you're figuring on being it, ain't you, Sam? Why you more than me? I pulled more and bigger jobs than you ever thought of. You're taking on a big one now, Arkansas. Let's see it pull it. to the Long Riders Self-Protective Association. Sam Bass, President. Major Jones, I'm not detracting from the splendid services you and your Rangers have rendered over the past two years. But this Sam Bass is making Texas the laughing stock of the nation. Governor? Sam Bass has organized the strongest band of outlaws on record. Compounded, Major, he's operating practically within the shadow of the Capitol. And what, may I ask, have you done about it? We've tried to run him to cover, sir. I've lost 30 good men within the last month. Sam Bass strikes in one county today and reappears in another two days later. The scoundrel is becoming a legend. They're even singing ballads about him. Look at my desk, sir. Piled high with letters of complaints and newspaper attacks on my administration. Major, we've got to put Sam Bass out of business before the legislature reconvenes. That's a tall order, Governor. It gives me less than a month. But if you don't care what methods I use... Do it any way you can. Only be on time, or there won't be any appropriation. And that means the end of the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Smith in the soup again. What is it this time? They slug Keeper Hanson and try to go over the wall. Well, pump Carver out and dry him off because he's wanted at the warden's office. Hello, Johnny. Major Jones. Excuse me, sir. I... The warden's boy has sort of got me sun blinded and waterlogged up. Here. Here, sit down. Thanks, sir. It's good to see you. It's always good to see an old friend. Even in a place like this. Looks like your luck kind of run out on you, Johnny. Yeah, it's run out for good, I reckon. What happened after the war? You used to be one of the best platoon sergeants I had. What went wrong? I got home to find nothing but a stone chimney and a heap of charcoal from a Yankee guerrilla raid. My ma and pa killed, kid brother wounded. I got him taken care of, then I... Then I joined up with the border raiders. One thing led to another. Reckon you know the rest. It's too bad. You'd have made a fine ranger. 
Not me. I never helped send a man to rot in a hole like this. Twenty-three more years to go. They might as well have made it life. They did. Nobody's ever lasted more than ten years in here. Sergeant, there's a new war on. It's not like the one we fought together. No flags waving, no bugle calls. It's a war of extermination between my rangers and the Sam Bass outfit. I need your help. What for? You know all the outlaw trails and hideouts along the Lampasas River. You used to be proud you were a Texan. Here's a chance for you to strike a blow for your state. I'm more interested in striking a blow for Johnny Carver. What's in it for me? A parole in my custody as a probationary ranger. The promise of a full pardon if you do a good job. Who's all in this Sam Bass outfit you're talking about? John Wesley Harden, David Rudabaugh, Duke Fisher, Butch Cassidy, and this Sundance kid? That's right. Did you get my pal Buff Smith out on this, this same kind of deal? That was part of my understanding with the governor. Major, you've got yourself a couple of new rangers. turn, Bob. Beats me. Some haul the boss made. Buff Smith and Johnny Carver, the fastest gun in Texas. Yeah. Honor. Danny, meet Buff Smith and John Carver. Honor. How are you? They've joined up with us. Gee, that's great. Uh, we thought they were prisoners. <laughs> I, uh, didn't catch the name quite right. Uh, Bonner. Danny Bonner. Take them over to mess and find bunks for them. They'll be riding out early in the morning. Why waste a night, Major? Buff and me could be well up the line by morning. That's all right with me. Go over to the corral, Danny. Find good mounts for them. Come in with me, boys, and get your outfits. Yes, sir. Hello, Major. Hello, Pete. How was your trip, sir? Not too rough. Anything new? Yes, sir, but it's not good. Hmm. They got Jim McQuaid up at Granger. One of our best men. That makes 31 this month. This note was found pinned to his jacket, sir. This will give you an idea what you're up against, Johnny. Keep sending him, Major. We've lots of ammunition. Signed, Sam Bass. All right, we'll try to accommodate Mr. Bass and company. Oh, uh, Captain, uh, meet John Carver and Buff Smith. They're joining us on probation. Uh, boys, this is Captain Peake, my second in command. Howdy, Captain. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to the Rangers. Just a minute, please. Oh, Major, this young lady's been waiting to see you. Miss Ellen Fenton. She's publisher of the Waco Star. Oh, I see. Well, what is it, Miss Fenton? Did I understand you correctly just now, Major? You've taken these men out of prison to make Rangers of them? That's right, Miss Fenton. Major Jones, these two men were tried and convicted as accessories to the murder of my father two years ago in Waco. I was a prosecuting witness. They're murderous outlaws. I'm afraid you're allowing your personal tragedy to blind you to reality, Miss Fenton. Two years ago, Texas was an outlaw state. Many young men, capable of becoming good citizens, had drifted into lives of violence. These men are cases in point. I think they should have a chance to redeem themselves. Well, then there's no use in my staying longer. I was hoping to go back to Waco and tell the people of my county that the Rangers would soon bring them relief from Sam Bass. But you can. These men are going to be of great help in rounding up that gang. They're the kind of men we need. We're fighting fire with fire, Miss Fenton. Major Jones, if the Texas Rangers have reached so low in the bottom of the barrel that there's nothing left but rotten apples, there's little hope for McLennan County. We might as well elect Sam Bass sheriff. Good day, sir. Whew. That filly leaves a trail like a prairie fire. 
Reckon you'll have to read the next edition of the Waco Star through smoke glasses, Major. I'm afraid so. Now, boys, if you'll take a look at this map. The last four jobs Sam Bass pulled were all between Little River and Waco. Well, that means they're working out of the land passes river country all right, Major. Yes, and Bass now has enough gunfighters to block every known path and ambush my men when they try to follow him. Now, I want you to locate his hideout in the bottomlands and spot an unguarded path through the river timber. I reckon Buff and me know about a hundred deer trails. They, they can't block them all. Right. And when you're all set, report back to me. I'll be a day's ride behind you with all the men I can assemble. And you lead us in for a surprise attack. Any questions? Reckon not. You, Buff? No. Well, the same major, didn't... Well, uh, didn't I smell chewing meat on the fire out there when we drove by? That's right, Buff. Mess cook will fix you up with all you want. Oh, man, oh, man. This will be the first time I sat down to three or four T-bones in, in two years. Just a minute, Buff. Now, boys, raise your right hands. Repeat after me. I solemnly swear... I, I solemnly, solemnly swear... swear to render loyal service to the state of Texas. To render loyal service to the state of Texas. Danny. Hi, Buff. Johnny G, you could have knocked me over with a broom straw when I saw you and Buff ride in. <laughs> How'd you do it? Danny Bonner, eh? What's the idea, kid? Shame to be known as my brother? That wasn't it, Johnny. You know it wasn't. I never have been ashamed of you. I told you that in my letters. They don't give you any mail in that prison, Danny. What about the packages I sent you? I expect our keepers enjoyed them. Oh, no wonder you thought I turned on you. No, I only took Uncle Bonner's name because... Well, because I was afraid they wouldn't let me in the Rangers if they knew about... Well, that's the only reason, that was all. Oh, look, Johnny, how could I have been ashamed of you? I've carried this medal of yours, haven't I, ever since you came back from the war? Now I can show it to everybody and let them know we're brothers. No, not yet, kid. Why not? Your being in the Rangers makes everything just fine. We can go to the Major and... No, and... nothing to it. Let things ride as they are. I get it. You want to prove yourself first. That's it. Sure. That's it. <laughs> well, look, if you'll go to the Major... And... Put in a good word for me, he'll let me string along with you and Buff on my first field. Oh, job. not a chance, Danny. This is special, just for Buff and me. Take care of yourself. When he was born, Buff, he weighed four and a half pounds on the hook. Well, he's a grown up Texas Longhorn now. killers in Texas without you two joining up. Now get these papers delivered. Yes, ma'am. But I'd still like to be around when Johnny Carver and Sam Bass meet up. Miss Helen, Sam Bass and a bunch of gunfighters just rode into town. They set themselves up in the Frontier Palace just as cool as you please. Where's the marshal and his deputy? When last seen, he was heading south. A coward. No wonder our boys make heroes of these murderers. Miss Helen, you ain't going to the palace. Where else? I run a newspaper, Pete. It's my job to interview celebrities when they come to town. Leave it to me, Mr. Bassett. Supper for nine and everything the best. And everything on the house. Oh, of course. It's a great pleasure, sir. Bill, Charlie, set the big table. Nice fella. Ah, a real hospitable town, Waco. We should come here more often. Oh, boys. Wes. That belt and bank job is ripe. And ready for us to pluck off the limb. Well, that penny ante piggy bank isn't worth a trip, Sam. She will be by the time we get there. I got news from the boys down south today. Wells Fargo is coming in with a big bundle of cash, and we're really gonna... You're Sam Bass, aren't you? That's right, ma'am. 
But you have the advantage of me. I'm Helen Fenton, publisher of the Waco Star. Pleased to know you, ma'am. What can I do for you? Just one thing. You and these hyenas of yours can climb right back on those horses outside and let the people of Waco breathe clean air again. My name ain't hyena, sister. It's Dave Rudabaugh. I know. I have all your photographs back at the office. You're John Wesley Harden, and you're Duke Fisher, and you're Butch Cassidy. And who am I, sister? You're the Sundance Kid. Easy, Sundance. I don't go for beaten women. What was I going to do, let her shoot me? Where did you get this talk about Johnny Carver? What talk is that? Read it. it. Says there that Johnny Carver's out of prison and joined the Rangers. Him and Buff Smith. Maybe that's the best way out for Texas after all. Make Rangers out of half the outlaws and you can fight it out among yourselves till you're all killed off. Ah, you talk too much, sister. See the lady to the door, Wes. I can find the door without assistance. Boys, this is a deeper creek than we think, and full of quicksand. The gal says here the Major told her that Buff and Johnny were going to help the Rangers round us up. That means they should be riding north. Hmm. I can't figure them two turning Ranger. I can. You know them? Raised in the same town. They was both in Major Jones's cavalry. Always bragging about what a great fellow Jones was. That explains things, Butch. I know those hombres, too. They're bad medicine. We don't want them north of the Lump Passes. Leave them to me, Sam. I got a special hate on them two sidewinders for that double cross they gave me here in Waco two years back. Oh, that's not the way I heard it, Sundance. Then you heard it wrong. Would you like to wade into it any deeper, Al West? None of that. There'll be no gunplay among ourselves. West, get over to the telegraph office. Jeff and Bart are down in Belton casing that bank job for us. Wire them and tell them to look out for Carver and Smith at Pecos Palmer's place in Granger. It's a good idea, Sam. Sundance, take a couple of the boys and head south right now. I want those two stopped below Belton so they won't interfere with that bank job tomorrow. It's a pleasure, Sam. But I won't need any help. I know a spot where I can Winchester the both of them right out of their saddles. Suit yourself, kid. On the way down, stop in on the telegraph operator. He might have some news from Pecos Palmer. Boys, who's poor? <laughs> you know, Johnny, I keep remembering all them pretty words to that oath the Major gave us back in Austin. I do solemnly swear to render faithful service to the state of Texas. <laughs> now, that's the first time I ever swore without cussing. Baker's Palmer's place is just up ahead. We ought to pick up the Sundance Kid's trail there. We ain't going gunning for that snake first, are we? We are if I can smoke him out. But the Major's orders was for us to locate... Well, let me do the figure. Sundance is our personal business. You owe him as much as I do, don't you? Oh, sure, Johnny, but we swore by the good book. And Sundance is first in my book. Tonight, tomorrow, or the day after. I know, except Pecos, the barkeep. Uh, them two at the bar. Appears like to me I've seen them before someplace. In Sam Bass's gang. Trail's heating up. Well, well. Rangers Johnny Carver and Buff Smith. Be careful of your language, boys. The law is with us. How'd you hear about it so soon, Pecos? Sundance Kid send you a telegram? Sundance Kid? Never heard of him. What'll be, Rangers? Reckon this ought to be safe. Your whiskey is bad enough, Pecos, without a shot of rat poison. Who belongs to that straw pony outside? How do I know? I ain't been outside. Reckon that's my pony you're asking about, Ranger. What's it to you? Mighty nice looking pony. Boys must have been in a big hurry. 
Getting here the same day you cross the land passes. We like to ride fast. Any objections? No, just wondering, that's all. Who sent you down to meet us? Sam Bass or the Sundance Kid? Talk fast. Where's Sundance? Just keep heading north. He'll be watching for you, Ranger. That's right. So long, Pecos. You better not be here on our return trip. You won't like that water cure up the state prison. Somewhere up the line. So Sundance will know we're after him. Doggone it, Johnny. He'll hole up someplace then, won't he? No, not him. He won't run. We'll have to do more looking behind us than in front of us. Howdy, Sundance. Wait till I sign off. Man, this line's been hot. Anything I ought to know? Yeah, Pegas Palmer wired up to Marshal Gorey at Belton about a shooting down at his place. Is that for me? At my usual rate, Sundance. Much obliged. Pegas said a couple of rangers, Carver and Smith by name, had a set to with Jeff Barton and Bart Howard. Yeah? Who won? The rangers. Still riding north, looking for you, Pegas said. Hmm. That's funny. I'm looking for them. to like this ranger business more and more. <laughs> that, that was the first time I ever used a gun with a clear conscience. Man, last time I rode through this part of the country, I had old Marshal Gorey in a posse ride and heard on me. How'd you shake him off? Hmm? Oh, I, I hold up in some of them trees over yonder. He rode right on by me. Show me once he was following. Somebody following us? Yeah, they have been ever since this morning. What's the big idea, kid? The Major sent me. He got word that Sam Bass and his gang are in Waco and they're coming south. Why'd he pick you? I don't know. I guess he figured wasn't a better man I could work with on my first field job. He's stalling. He knows who you are and sent you out because he don't trust me to go through with a job. Oh, no, Johnny, you got him all wrong. He knows you wouldn't back out once you've started something. Yeah, once uh, I started uh, something, uh, I'm going to... You know, I... I sure have been getting out of practice with this thing lately. You know, I took a shot last night at ten feet and was over an inch and a half high. Huh. Hey, the... the... Feller what put up that sign over there forgot to dot the eyes. Oh, now. It's still an inch high. Hey, now that's pretty good shooting, John. Well, nail me up to a barn door to dry. Say, where'd you learn to shoot like that? <laughs> I had a pretty good teacher. <laughs> Hold it. You two stay here. Johnny, he ain't likely to be alone. That's something I'll have to find out for myself. 
I'd feel pretty good, wouldn't I, taking you into an ambush? What? Well, you keep me here if you have to throw in hog time. done by tagging after us, turned a doggone good ranger into a doggone nursemaid. you have it in the back like you did me that would be too easy on you rise and reach higher all right ranger what's next take one hand down slowly to that belt buckle and open her up slowly i said Major Jones is sure gonna be happy to see you. I want you to get a taste of that water hole at the state pen. I'd like to see you after the warden's boys get through playing with you for a month or so. Somebody got it. Yeah, but which one? I can't wait here to find out. <laughs> Johnny, you got it. Man, oh man, that last shot had us both worried. Where'd you leave the Major's outfit? Down at Round Rock. They should be making Pecos Palmers by sundown. Take this load of buzzard meat and deliver it to him. But if we push on fast, we got a chance to get our job done while the gang's still north of the river. That's the Major's job. I've finished mine. I don't get it. Give the Major my thanks. And tell him not to worry about buffing me anymore. We're leaving Texas for good. But you gave him your word, your solemn oath. It's the promises I make to myself that count with me. And I kept that one. Johnny, wait. There's nothing to argue about, kid. One ranger of the family is enough. Come on, Buff. You're not going anywhere. Get your hands up. You know you couldn't shoot. If you don't think so, just try for your gun. Buff, I could give this fool kid a one-shot edge and still get him. But I don't want to hurt him. Take his gun away for me. I'm sorry, Johnny. I'm stringing with Danny. And you know you can't give me no one-shot edge. Get his gun belt, Danny. Belton's the next town north. I'm turning you over to the marshal there, and then I'm going to do the job that you were sent out to do. Locate Sam Bass's hideout. Why, you don't know one trail from another. But I do. Hot news from down the line, boss. Johnny Carver, Buff Smith, and another ranger just rode into Little River with a Sundance kid. Dead and tied to his saddle. How long ago? Not more than an hour. The operator at Little River wired up to Belton. They left Sundance's body and rode on north. His Sundance wasn't as handy with that Winchester as he figured. Butch, Dave, take three of the boys and see that Carver outfit stopped south of Belton. 
We can't have them riding in on that bank job tomorrow morning. Luke, Carter, Hilton. Come on, Dave, let's go. From here, boys, we drift on into Belton, easy like. Meet up at the Rancher Hotel tonight. Get them started, John. You two have everything it takes to be rangers except brains. If Sam Bass is riding south like the Major told you, he ought to be pretty near here by now. I don't like riding into his reception committee empty-handed. It's a good try, but no deal. Take cover here. It'll be easy pickings when they stop for water. Yeah. Tie him up in the trees, boys. you keep going get bad nah just a scratch in the back that slug was meant for you get one of the canteens thanks I'm all right I reckon we better take you back south to the Major instead of going on to Belton. Give Buff your gun. It's all right, Danny. I'm going to take you back to the Major. I knew you couldn't run out on us. <laughs> no more than you could have pulled that trigger on me, Danny. Buff, get my pony, will you? Be ready to travel in a minute. As soon as I catch my breath, Sure, kid. Right away. It's four o'clock now. If we can be at the Lamb Passes by eight. Kind of... Kind of dark for four o'clock, ain't it, Johnny? <laughs> it's clouding up a bit, Danny. Seems like a northerner's coming on. We'll telegraph the Major a report from Little River. Only... Only we'll sign it, John and Daniel Carver. No more of this Bonner stuff. Yeah, for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next chance I get, can you get me one of them fancy, <laughs> fancy watch fobs that, that dudes wear? <laughs> I'm gonna hang this metal in plain sight, where everybody can see it. <laughs> I'll get one for you myself, Danny. Folks will ask me, they'll say. Son, where'd you get that metal? <laughs> I'll see. 
See, my brother, Johnny, wanted fighting in Shiloh. <laughs> fighting for Texas. Now you're talking too much, are Danny? Take it easy a bit. Yeah. Give me a ride, Ranger. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny, I can't see it. He's Johnny. You never knowed he was Johnny's brother, huh, Major? I knew who he was all along. In fact, it was something he said about being men in prison who'd make good rangers if they had the chance. It started me working on getting you and Johnny out. Mm. And Johnny wanted me to ask you to have him buried under his right name. Of course. I'll take him back to Austin with us. He'll rest in the state cemetery along with a lot of other good Texans. You going back to Austin, Major? We've been ordered back. But what about Johnny? He'd be working up there trailing Sam Bass and figuring you're right behind him. You know how to make contact with him? Well, we figured out a place about four miles this side of Waco to me. You better get ready to start north again, Buff. I'll give you your final instructions before you go. Yes, sir. cash and new Yankee folding money. Good as gold and easier to carry. Wells Fargo's smartening up. Look at all them guards. Yeah, but they'll be pulling out soon. Their responsibility ends with delivery. They put in, we take out. and the others. The Sam inside? Yeah. Room 22, second floor. I don't get it, Dave. Five of you against three and you still couldn't pull it off. Well, Sam, it was just one of those things. Carver got Cassidy and the rest of the boys with a few lucky shots. I was the only one left and had to get out of there. Looks like I'll have to make Carver my own personal business. Here's your opportunity, Sam. Johnny Carver. Hold it, Dave. We'll have them Wells Fargo men back on our hands. Howdy, Marshal. Howdy, Johnny. From the telegrams I got, seems like I can welcome you to the side of law and order. I'm mighty glad to hear it, young fellow. Thanks. How many deputies you got? Uh, nary a one. Nothing ever happens in this one-horse town. Well, you better hold your hat, Marshal. There's a lot more than one horse back at the hotel, and men to ride them. Sam Bass outfit. Sam Bass? Why, man, Wells Fargo just bought in $50,000 of county money. So that's what they're after. Ain't there no more rangers around? Not within a day's ride. Well, Johnny, it looks like it's just you and me. Yeah, I reckon it is, whether we like it or not. That makes the setup even more interesting. You all know the cards I dealt you? Let's go play them. What kind of cards are you going to deal, Carver? Aces and eights. Dead man's hand. Get in the cage, quick. Take cover behind the dead. Eddie, Tom, flat on the floor. Looks bad, Marshal. There's always a chance, son, to get the one with your name on it. Thank <laughs> you. 
safe and put it in the bag. But why? Don't ask questions, do it. Grab that tie rail. Break in the door. It's all there, Ranger. Much obliged. But that's the bag sponge you got in that. Drop that gun, Marshal. Johnny. Drop it, I tell you. Now, this will have your name on it. You're too late to rob this bank, Sam Bass. That renegade ranger, Johnny Carver, just beat you to it. Did you check on this wire? Yes, sir. It came direct from Belton. Old Marshal Gorey sent it himself. John Carver robbed Belton Bank. I'd have bet my bottom dollar on that man. So would I, sir. Even though I'd only seen him once. This is going to be an awful blow to the Rangers when the papers get through with it. It's going to be worse than that. I sent Buff Smith north to meet Carver with a message of vital importance. Well, sir, we better send out some wanted notices. There's nothing else to do. Wire every Ranger outpost, every sheriff in the state. John Carver wanted, dead or alive. Right, sir. Johnny Carver, you're a worse double-crosser than the Sundance Kid. I'm taking you in. You must have heard about the Belton Bank job. Heard about it, you Henri critter. They got wanted notices out on you all over the state of Texas. Now, take it easy, Buff. I only pulled that job to save the money from the Sam Bass gang. And to keep old Marshal Goree from getting shot. Money's in a safe place, Buff. All but what I'm holding out to buy myself a seat at Sam Bass's table. Are you fixing to join up with that outfit? That's the only way I can do a job for the Major. Danny. I've got to join him to find out how to trap him. Well, tie me tail to tail with a wildcat. <laughs> but Johnny, the Major wants us both back in Austin right away. What for? But to help guard the Yankee gold loan. Yankee gold loan? Oh, man, where you been? They're loaning Texas a million dollars cash. It's coming down Friday. On the Texas Central? They're running a special train for it. Buff? That's our chance to lay the Sam Bass outfit right in the Major's lap. I'm going into Waco. Oh, no, Johnny. They'll blast you out of your saddle. Oh, stop worrying, Buff. Just bore yourself a hole in that clump of trees over there, and I'll come back soon and dig you out. Surprising, isn't it? But you see, that's part of my job, interviewing celebrities. In your case, I'm anxious to get some facts for your obituary. Reckon I was playing hooky from school when that word came up. It means death notice. Oh. Ain't you a mite previous, ma'am? I'm feeling fine. From what I hear, there'll be a sudden change for the worse when Sam Bass learns you're in town. So, uh, how about a few last words for my next edition? Why, sure, ma'am. What about? I'd like to print, straight from your own mouth, just how it feels to take a solemn oath of allegiance to your native state and break it. See you later. And then to double-cross your own thieving pals till you wind up without a friend in the world, hunted by the law and the lawless alike, every man's hand against you. How does it feel, convict John Carver? <laughs> Sister, you wouldn't be a bad looker. You'd wash some of that printer's ink off your face and hands. You sure got a nerve. I wish he'd go before Sam Bass found it. Right now, look who's coming. <laughs> 
some chicken, Sam. It's mighty tasty. Before I drop you, Johnny, why'd you pull that Belton job on me? Figured it was the only way I could talk to you and not start shooting. You and me's gone beyond talking, Johnny. Maybe. There's a certain deal coming up. Only you and your men can handle. Such as what? It's about a train. And a million dollars in cold cash. Come to think of it, that chicken does look pretty good. Set him up, Rigo. Tell West to stop poking his gun through those doors. It makes me nervous. Okay, boys, come on in. Send the drinks into the back room. Bring another platter of chicken. After two years in the state prison, I'd have joined any outfit to get out, even the Yankee cavalry, especially when it meant a chance to tie the score with Sundance. Was it a fair fight? Not as fair as you could get with Sundance. He's strictly a percentage player. This time it was his Winchester against my six gun. Well, it became that pal of yours, Buff Smith. Pals once, but no more. Buff got religion, I reckon. Wanted to stand with a ranger, so we split up. If you ain't a ranger, what'd you do with that belt and loot? <laughs> it's in a safe spot, Sam. I'll take you to it someday. All I want is my cut of it. That's an easy promise, Johnny. But money talks. Well, here's some with a few words to say. Two thousand I held out for expenses on this money train job. You can handle it, Sam. Oh. That puts you in. Now, oh, well, tell us about that treasure train. Is that that Yankee loan to Texas I've been reading in the papers about? That's right. Why, well, that shipment will carry a whole trainload of Pinkerton men and rangers. Not from the orders I saw on Major Jones's desk. It's coming down secret on the Texas Central Branch from Dallas. What day? What train number? <laughs> Sam, I need you and the men. But if I told you everything I know, maybe you wouldn't need me. <laughs> you win, Johnny. <laughs> I figure we all better be in the vicinity of Round Rock by Friday morning. That's my pick of towns for the job. Round Rock suits me fine. Depot's right in town, plenty of cover, and easy getaway. It's a deal, then? It's a deal. Okay, boys, let's clear the table and play a little draw. Not me, Sam. Dude smells so sweet, I think I'll run over to St. Long's and get me a bath. See you later. So long, partners. Better see that he gets over to St. Long's safe. I wouldn't want anything to happen to it. Not yet, anyway. Come on. Paper, Mr. Carver? Oh, thanks. I've seen it. Ain't you and Sam Bass gonna shoot it out? Well, not today, I reckon. Aw, oh, gee. Will you do me a favor? Sure. Can you keep a secret? Anything. Here's a cartwheel for you. Just lead my pony up the street to the livery stable. Why, sure, and thanks, Johnny. Want me to unsaddle and feed him? No. Just lead him straight through the stable to the back alley. And then bring him down the alley behind Sing Wong's place. I'll be waiting for you there. Understand? You ain't letting old Sam Bass run you out of town, are you? You worry too much, kid. Now get going. <laughs> Got 
Got a straight buff? Yeah, sure, Johnny. I, I catch the next train for Austin, and I tell the Major that you got the Sam Bass outfit fixing to rob the gold train at Round Rock next Friday. That's right. Hey, you can square me with him on that belt and bank job, too. Oh, he'll sure be glad to know what you've been doing, too. Let me get well up the road before you show yourself. <laughs> Right on in, Johnny. Get yourself a couple for the road. I could use a couple. Hey, you look slicker than a wet muskrat. Enjoy your bath over at Wong's? Yeah, and caught up on some lost sleep. Hot tub sure is wonderful. I take one every month, whether I need it or not. Where'd you pick him up? Over near Downs, Johnny. We picked him up after you left him. What about it, Johnny? Sure I met him. I wanted to give him a last chance to quit the Rangers and throw in with us. Throw in with you? A man that had rat out on a friend like the Major after he got you out of prison? I told you he got religion. I don't need no religion to hate polecats like you. And this Rudolph. He shot my pal, Danny Bonner, in the back. And bragged about it to me. What do you say, Sam? Let me shut his yak for good. Wait a minute, Dave. You sure he didn't have a chance to send any messages? Well, he never got out of that patch of woods. We've been working on him all afternoon. Trying to break down that sad story, your busted friendship. And no break? Not a crack out of him. I'll have to admit it looks like a real split up, all right. Okay, Johnny, I guess that puts you in solid with all of us. What do you want done with him? Let him go. What he don't know can't hurt us. Well, it's too late for that now, Johnny. I couldn't trust him out of my sight. Give him another chance, Sam. After all, he was a friend of mine once. No friend of mine? No, mine. Sorry, Johnny. Feel, Johnny. But with a million in gold at stake, we couldn't take any chances. All right, Sam. Let's start south. Now you're talking. Hit the street, boys. We'll split up and head for Little River. Just a minute, Sam. Got a little unfinished business with that girl in there. All right, so I was wrong. You still have some friends, and a fine crew they are, too. Sit down and listen to me. I've got to make this look rough, lady. They're watching every move. So if you want to help round up Sam Bass and his whole outfit, just sit there and listen a minute. I only pulled that bank job beginning with a Sam Bass outfit. I had to use part of the money. But the rest of it is on its way back to the bank. I don't believe a word you're saying. Listen, lady. We're riding south right now. There's very little time. You take the night train to Austin and tell Major Jones I'm still working. Tell him I've got Sam Bass and his whole outfit set to rob the Yankee gold train at Brown Rock Friday. Got that? Brown Rock Friday. Now sit down. They killed Buff Smith before he got away to take word to the Major. I can't use a telegraph. Bass has friends listening in on the line. You're the only chance left. Please, Van Helen, he's telling the truth. You've got to believe. Nice going, kid. If she doesn't go, you take that train. Here's some money for you. I wish I could believe you. You'd better believe me. Maybe this will help convince you. She'll go, all right. So now, lady, leave my name out of your paper. I'll come back and do that again. Was 
Has Buff Smith really killed Miss Fenton? Yes, in the Frontier Palace. I saw the body. Major, that would seem to lend some conviction to the story Carver told you. Yes, but it could be a trick. Get our men in one place and then rob the train in another. Johnny Carver wouldn't do that, Major. Honest, he wouldn't. Jimmy's his champion. In fact, if it hadn't been for Jimmy, I don't think I'd have bothered to come down to Austin. And yet there was a desperate sort of sincerity about that man that you couldn't deny. Especially that kiss he'd give you. Oh. Yes, Major, but by force. I think it was intended to amuse the men looking on from outside and help put them off their guard. Well, my dear, I've already risked too much on Carver to back down now. We'll see it through, sink or swim. When that gold train rolls into Round Rock, my men and I will be there to give Sam Bass a welcome. And so will the Waco Star. Me too, oh boy! <laughs> Charlie, my hat's off to you. Ah, boys, there's no doubt about it. Number 44 is our baby. She's highballing all the way to Waco up to Round Rock. Everything else on the sidetrack to give her right away. Any idea how heavy she's guarded? Yeah, she's got three men with the money and the rest Pinkerton's riding as passengers. Well, hadn't we better hightail it for Round Rock, Sam? With 44 running free, she'll be an hour ahead of schedule. That's right, Johnny. Only we ain't going to Round Rock. I don't get it, Sam. If she's free and makes the first stop there... Why wait till she stops? Dave, you remember that horseshoe bend a couple of miles north of Round Rock? Well, sure. I've run it many a time when I was railroading. 44 will be slowed down to a walk when she goes through there. You and Duke get on, take over the engine, uncouple that express car, leave the rest of the train and the Pinkertons behind, and we'll meet you at Cooper's water tank. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're making history, Sam. No one's ever stolen a moving train before. Oh, Dave, as soon as you've shaken loose that express car, give us one long and one short blast on the whistle so we know everything's all set. Right. One long and one short. And be sure you don't forget, because if we don't hear that whistle, we'll think you messed up. Then we'll throw the switch and ditch the whole train by the water tower. Well, give me a third man for the uncoupling and a camp miss. I reckon that's me, Sam. I'm a railroader from way back. Now, ain't that swell. No wonder I took such a fancy to you. Same here. You three better get up the top of the hill and find a good spot to get on that engine. Hey, uh, Sam, aren't we about ready to get rid of that counterfeit? Sure. As soon as he uncouples the train. <laughs> Much obliged. Forty-four just cleared Temple, Major. Thanks, Joe. Less than an hour more, Captain. Any sign of any bass men in town yet? No, sir, not so far. They should have been drifting in long ago, if they're really coming here. Yes, sir. It doesn't look good. No. Well, Miss Fenton, you take Jimmy into the waiting room. And when that train rolls in, be sure you keep him inside till it's all over. Yes, sir. But I think I'd better find a piece of rope first. <laughs> oh, Aunt Helen. I'm going to miss all the shoes. <laughs> Well, let's get the boys headed south. Mr. Bass, I just got a flash from Round Rock. The whole town's full of rangers. Have a cigar. Have a cigar. And remember, son, don't ever trust nobody's brains but your own. <laughs> Raise you seven cents. I reckon this is the first game of penny ante ever played on a million dollar table. <laughs> I'll raise you a nickel.
Johnny. Okay, Johnny. Join us up at the engine. Something's wrong, boys. She's slowing down. Hold it, Bill. They're on the car. I had Carver figured right. He made a move to warn the Pinkerton men. Well, that closes them out, don't it? On sight. The signal, Wes. They made it all right. Call them in off that switch. Get ready to blast that car open. Slow it down. Get away from that throttle. I'll let you run her straight through to Austin. Nothing doing, Ranger. Dave and Johnny in a tangle.
newspaper now. Charge it to the Waco Star. Yes, ma'am. Well, there'll be an extra on the Waco streets within a half an hour, and what a story. Thanks to you, Johnny. Remember what I said I'd do to you if you put my name in your paper again, ma'am? Well? Turn around, son. 